Hey guys, welcome back. If you're a newbie, I'm Christina. Today we're going to create this short, neat, minimalist animation. This is part one of the process. We'll be creating the style frames in Illustrator. These are two pretty typical scenes for explainer videos in the field of cybersecurity, which has been a very hot topic for a while already, and it will last until the end of the internet era. I recently received a question from a YouTube user called Z Animates, and the question was basically, how do I come up with ideas for a video style? Thank you, Zanimates, for the question. I 100% understand the struggle. To me personally, the very beginning of the project, when I have to define the style, is pretty disturbing. Because it is always easier to work when you know the rules. You just follow them and you'll be fine. But what do I do when there are no rules yet? I go and explore some reference videos and images, especially the ones that were created for the same field. Let's see what's been uploaded to Vimeo for cybersecurity. I found a lot of nice animations, many of them are pretty close to my style, as I love clean abstract animation much more than character animation. But what do I analyze and compare specifically? While watching the videos and getting inspired, I have to decide for myself the following points. Do I want a dark or light background? What would be the primary colors? What would be the accent colors? Should the strokes be thick or thin? Should the corners and caps be sharp or round? What kind of font would fit? Serif, sans serif, thick, thin, narrow, white, round, square, maybe something avant-garde. What type of background animation would fit? What kind of accent graphics would fit? And <laughs> whatever else comes to mind. When these questions are answered in my head, I usually come up with first ideas. I choose a color palette, try out different fonts, some kind of graphics that would fill the background and try first shapes. Let's create this very simple yet elegant background. It's just a bunch of crosses, as you see. Let's create a line, then duplicate and rotate it. If you need to duplicate an object without displacement, use Ctrl-C and Ctrl-Shift-V. Then align both lines horizontally and vertically in case needed and group together. Now we have to hold Alt and drag the cross to the side, like so. You see, we created a copy. From here on, our main shortcut is Ctrl-D, which duplicates the last transformation. When the required space is filled with crosses, we select them all and group together. And guess what we do next? We copy and drag the entire group, but this time down. And duplicate this action until we're happy. I think there are plenty of different techniques how to duplicate objects. As there are always at least several ways of how to do almost anything in Illustrator, I showed you my personal preferred method. Now let's create a shield. We draw a circle and using the anchor point tool, which you may find here, we click on the anchor and drag to the side. See these little handles appear. We need to create something like this. Don't worry that it's not symmetrical yet, we'll fix it very soon. Now we have to create another ellipse. Rotate it a bit and place it on top of our bubble shape, like this. Two shapes are obviously not enough, this is not a serious attitude. We surely need a third one and it's going to be a rectangle this time. Place it like so, select all three shapes and choose minus front in the Pathfinder panel. Fabulous! We have one side of the shield, then we just have to right-click, go to Transform, select Reflect. We'll be reflecting along the vertical axis and press Copy. Not OK, but Copy. Voila! We have another side. Let's zoom in very, very closely, place two parts next to each other and select Unite. So, this technique allows you to create various less or more complex shapes. These lines right here are actually dashes of another shield, which is just slightly bigger than the main one. So, these elements are just perfect circles with small rectangles in the center. But how to place them out evenly? Here's the trick. We temporarily create a rectangle, place it right in the center of this big circle, like so. Please check in the view menu that Snap to Point and Smart Guides are enabled. And now we clearly see where we should place the secondary elements. Okay. 
Okay, let's move on to the second frame. Let's start with the pillars. We draw a simple rectangle and just slightly change the position of the anchor points using direct selection tool. And then copy the pillar several times, draw a line, draw another line, draw a circle, delete the bottom anchor point of the circle, boom, the government icon is ready. Ah, the flag, <laughs> very important element. University is created in the same exact manner, but instead of half circle, we have half rectangle here for the roof. Corporations. Big rectangle, small rectangle, copy, 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 change color several times, rectangle again, add a few anchor points, delete anchor points, short line, copy, copy, long line, copy, 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 <laughs> boom, ready. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if so, give it a like. In order not to miss the second part where we animate our beautiful style frames, please make sure you are subscribed, press that notification bell and I'll see you in the next one. Take care!